Uh, joining our closing bell exchange, Barb Doran, uh, portfolio manager at BD8 Capital Partners, uh, Stephen P. Grasso from Stuart <laughs> Frankel and Rick Santelli from the CME in uh, Chicago. Stephen, I'll start with you. It's funny, I, did, I didn't Stephen, see that coming. Stephen P., uh, who uh, <laughs> told us that he's only called Steve by CNBC and yeah, everyone else calls yeah, him Stephen. It's funny. Uh, so we've corrected that now. Stephen. Yes. Why that sell-off? We just asked Mike the question. Have you got any so, further insight? To well, anyone could always guess at these things. I think it was the headline where a couple of days ago we saw, or yesterday we saw the Pentagon headline on the rice and, uh, envelopes, and it was tested today, and I believe a headline came out sort of around that same time saying that it was caster, caster seeds, and the market sold off. So any, anyone is kind of just reaching for these things. So that would be my best guess, that the algorithms sort of just knee-jerk reaction sold the market off when they saw that. But either way, Steve, um, a, yeah. a, a positive start to, to the quarter. Is that what's been driving positivity this week more than any of necessarily the headlines or fundamentals? So I, I'm sitting here, I listen to Mike's report, and when you look at the buying the laggards, Coming in now, I think that's a big case to this. So you had month end, you had quarter end. What rally today? Financials and um, basically a small cap. If those things are going to rally, those are the things that people didn't own into quarter end, into month end. So I think they're getting their day in the sun where they were under owned. So mutual funds uh, year end, a lot of them end September 30th. So that's why they're putting money to work in the laggards. That's my best guess. Uh, Rick, we should go to you uh, on this move in interest rates. Part of the reason we're seeing strength in financials. Seven-year high for 10-year yield, four-year high for 30-year yield. We got a bunch of upbeat data. You were with us at the top for that record services number. What's the bond market telling you? You know, the bond market's telling me that all lights are green, uh, not only for the Fed, but for the economy at large and for investors to invest in the economy at large. Uh, don't see any big snags out there at the moment. And, you know, maybe some out there will take that as a sign to be more cautious. That's fine, too. But there's neat things going on. The spread between tens and boons is approaching 270 basis points. I've never seen it there. Hey, my chart goes back to 1989. Nowhere near there, so that's significant. Other significant aspects, the credit markets, the real credit markets, uh, not the ETFs with regard to things like junk, high yield, there's some of the narrow spreads going back pre-crisis. Uh, this is all very important because nothing is really signaling that, that there's any smoke out there that you should pay added attention to. And as for the yield curve, as we sit now, we have a 30 basis point differential between tens and twos. Now, I do suspect that may narrow a bit. I hope it doesn't. But what we really want to observe the next 48 hours, twofold, see how Europe and Japan's rates respect this move in our rates, A, and B, we want to pay very close attention to exactly what the dollar does and, and pay attention to how this spread on the junk in the corporate side ends up playing out. Because to me, you're not only going to see this type of a move in the Treasury complex, I think you're also going to see maybe some selling in those better behaved aspects of the credit market because the need to reach for yield starts to diminish. Bob, how are you positioned at the moment? Are you bullish for the rest of the year? Yes, I am. And into next year. You know, I what I keep hearing from everybody, everybody's looking for the canary in the coal mine, but there's no canary yet. And I think when you saw the ADP numbers this morning, the ISM uh, service sector numbers, it is showing how strong this economy is. And this is not going to be over in the next quarter or two. So I think uh, uh, most investors are saying, I have to be bullish, I have to be invested, but where? You know, there's so many like the high tech P or high flying PE. You don't want to be in them right now until they sell off a little more. So you're seeing this rotation chasing the undervalued. Like you said, Steve, people are going for the laggards. But when they catch up, they'll rotate out of them. So I don't see, you know, any sector specific. I think it's being driven by valuation and looking where can I put money to work? What this about it's not over? What about what Rick's talking about right now with, with these higher yields? And now we're talking about real levels, multi year highs. The fact that stocks pretty much rallied along with those jump in yields, is, is that a bullish sign? Does it tell you well, something about the risk appetite? Yeah, I think it does because, you know, always the risk is, okay, is this inflationary? What is what is this telling us? And so far, there's still no signs of inflation. You know, when the Fed starts raising interest rate, there's typically is a lag from, you know, 18 to 24 months, but there's still no signs that it's probably, you know, my best guess is what so many people have opined about is really this global competition, and we're still under capacity worldwide. I want to ask you both quickly about midterms. Are they a worry for you, Steve? Uh, no, I don't think they're a worry. I think seasonality and historically they're a uh, positive sign for the for the market, especially going into the market at this stage, being up where we are. It's an 80% chance that we're actually going to finish the year 
more positive. S&P, the best year, the best month on a five-year trailing is October. IWMs, the best month, November. Stay invested into year end. Midterms, Bob? Well, you know, the, the, I think they're worth watching because, you know, the policy impact from uh, this, this administration has been uh, meaningful in the market, as we know, from trades, tax reform, et cetera. And when I look at the midterms, even though even if the Democratic sweep, the Democrats sweep or it's a split Congress, I don't think it's going to make any difference because even if the Democrats sweep, you're not going to, they're not going to have a veto proof majority. And if you look back historically, it's been very interesting. Back to 1930, almost 90 years, the market in the next 12 months after midterms has been up on average 13 percent with the exception of two years, 1930 and 1938. So, you know, hey, Wolf, I, I just let's hope see. it's not those two years. Yeah. <laughs> No, so I think in the midterms, I think maybe uh, if it looks like the Democrats are going to sweep, maybe health care stocks get a bit of a fright. But I think once they realize the Dems aren't going to be able to do anything, mm -hmm. it's going to, it'll, it'll be stable. Wait, wait, Rick, we want to hear from you on this. But also, I just want to add one quick question, because I think the interest rate story is a huge one today, the sell-off in bonds. And I'm just wondering, based on what Barb said, whether you think it's a reflection of rising interest rates of the Fed on the back of what we just saw in terms of the economic data or inflation expectations? Well, my personal feeling is it's probably a little bit of both, but I really don't think that rates, I mean, I know the markets come off a little bit on the equity side. I think there's a comfort factor here. I think it would be more shocking if rates didn't follow the economy and what's going on in equities. But to weigh in on the midterms, listen, I think this is huge. I would take up, take that book, and I agree with all of Barbara's statistics, but I'd tear it up. This one's different. No matter what you think of the president, and I don't mean to get political, but there's very little doubt that a pro-business president in November 2016 was the reason the market surged, even before he was sworn in. I think the opposite of that is possible, considering how Congress ends up giving divvied up. If, if the Democrats gain the House, or specifically gain the House and the Senate, the future of this president may be in jeopardy. And if the future of this president's in jeopardy, everything we're talking about could be in jeopardy.